안녕하세요 여러분 여러분 오, 요즘 제가 안경을 쓰게 됐어요 그래서 좀 처음 수분 안경이라 많이 어지럽습니다 자 그러면은 오늘은 Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire 를 읽어보겠습니다 Chapter 1 The Riddle House The villagers of Little Hallington still called it the Riddle House even though it had been many years since the Riddle House family has lived there It stood on a hill overlooking the village Some of its windows boarded tiles missing from its roof and ivy spreading unchecked over its faces One of fine looking manner and especially large and grandest building for miles around. The little, the little Hallington all agreed that old house was creepy. Half a century ago, something strange and horrible had happened there. Something that older inhabitants of the village still liked there. Something that the older discussed when topics of gossip were discussed. Story had been played. Nobody was quite sure what the truth was anymore. Every vision of that tale, however, started in the same place. Fifty years before, at daybreak on a fine summer morning, when the riddle house had been still been well kept and provisioned, a maid had entered the drawing room to find all three riddles dead. The maid had come running, screaming down the hill. And the village and roused as many people as could. <gasps> Lying there with their eyes wide open, cold as ice, still in their dinner things, the police were summoned, and the whole of Little Harrington has seized with shock, curiosity, and ill disguised excitement. Nobody wasted their breath pretending to feel very sad about the riddles, for they had been most unpopular, and their grown-up son, Tom, had been, if anything, worse. All the villagers care about healthy people, not a drop dead of nature cause on the same night. The hanged man, the village pub, the roaring trade that night, whole relation to have turned out to discuss the murderers. They were rewarded for leaving their firesides when the real cooks arrived dramatically in their midst announced to suddenly have that a man called Frank Bruce has just been arrested. Frank cried several people. Never Frank Bruce was the riddles gardener. He lived alone in a run-down cottage on the grounds of the little house. Frank had come back from the war with a very stiff leg, a great dislike of crowds and loud noises, and had been working from the riddles ever since. Now the rush of bite to cook drinks and heard hear more details. Always thought he was old, she told the eagerly listening villagers. After her forced sharing, unfriendly. Luck, I'm sure. If I've offered him a couple once, I offered it a hundred times. Never wanted a mix. He didn't. Ah, now, said the woman at the bar. He had a hard work, Frank. He likes the quiet life. That's no reason to. Who else had a key for the back? Door, then barked the cook. There been a spare key hanging in the gardener's cottage back for 
back as I can remember. Nobody forced the door last night. No broken windows. All Frank had to do was creep up the big house while we were all sleeping. The villagers exchanged dark looks. I oh, I always saw he had a nasty look about him, right enough. Run to the man at the funeral. War turned him funny if she asked me, said the landlord. Landlord. Told you. Told you. I wouldn't like to get on the wrong side of Frank, didn't I? Tut, said an excited woman in the corner. Horrible temper, said Tut, nodding fervently. I remember when he was a kid. By the following morning, hardly anyone in Little Hellington that doubt that Frank Boris has killed Bruce. But over the night town of Great Hellington, in the dark at Denny police stations, Frank was stubbornly repeating again and again that he was innocent. And the only person he had seen near the house on the day of the little dead house when a teenage boy, a stranger, dark haired and pale. Nobody else in the village has seen any such boy. And the police was quite sure Frank had invited him. Then just one one thing were look very serious for Frank, the report on Riddle's bodies came back and changed everything. The police had never read an auto report. A team of doctors had explained the bodies and had concluded none of Riddles had been poisoned, stabbed, shot, strangled, suffocated, or as far as they could tell, harmed at all. In fact, the reporter continued in the tone of a Mexico New Ireland. The Riddles all appeared to be in perfect health, apart from their all dead. The doctors didn't, did not as though they determined to find something wrong with the body. That each of Riddle had a look of terror upon his or her face. But as frustrated, the police said, Whoever heard Pittory Pippa being frightened to death? As there was no proof that the Riddle had been murdered at all, the little Hellington crushed hard, and they gr their graves were main object of curious for a while. To everyone's surprise um, and amaze, a cloud of suspicion. Frank Bruis returned to his cottage on the grounds of the little house. So far as I'm concerned, he killed them, and I don't care what the police say. Thought in the hangman. And if he had any testimony, he'd live there, knowing how he knows he did it. But Frank did not leave. He stayed to tend the garden for the next family who lived in the royal house. And the next, for neither family stayed long, perhaps it was partly because of Frank that the only the owner said there was a nasty feeling about this place, which is a sense of inhabitants started to fall with fire. The wealthy man who owned the rural house these days neither lived there nor put it to any use. They said villagers that he kept it for tax reasons, though nobody was very clear what these might be. The wealthy owner consumed paid Frank to do the gardening. However, Frank was nearing his seventh, seventh birthday now. Very deep, his bad legs stiffer than ever, but he, but he could be seen pottering around the flowers bed in fine weather. Even though the weeds were starting to creep up on him, try as he might suppress them.